Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Monday over here in the Atlantic. The big story right now is Hurricane Irene, the first hurricane of the season here northwest of Puerto Rico, made landfall last night in Puerto Rico as a tropical storm and brought near hurricane conditions to this area as it came across. And we're now looking at a strengthening storm here trying to leave this area. And the core in here still a little bit ragged on satellite imagery. We have no eye popping out yet, and the convection is not all that strong in here, but it is only a Category 1, and it is going going to try to work on that eventually. Some dry air entrainment yesterday has been keeping the core a little bit weak in the western side. A little bit void of convection here. It's mainly weighted off to the northeast of the core here, but eventually this will try to fill out a little bit more and we'll start to get this structure together, especially once it gets away from the land masses of Puerto Rico and Hispaniola. And we could see this strengthen quite a bit once it gets out into the Bahamas. And this is a track now if you look at radar, we can see that the center is moving off towards the west-northwest, and this is something that we talked about yesterday, that the track was going to have to shift north because this is now moving towards the northern coast of the, the Dominican Republic, possibly avoiding the island altogether, leading to minimal land interaction with the core here. And this will still try to disrupt the core as it moves close to the mountains because the inflow coming into the eye off of the mountains here has to sink down the mountain slopes and warm and dry as it comes into the eye wall. So this is going to still disrupt the core a little bit, even if it's an offshore pass, but it is a minimal interaction with those mountains, which means that this is going to have a greater opportunity to strengthen as it comes west-northwest. And this is something we talked about, that uh, there is a real possibility here of a major hurricane affecting the southeast United States coastline later this week. And this is becoming more and more likely now. In the Hurricane Center, you can see now, actually forecasts a Cat 3 moving up into the Carolinas by Saturday. So this is something that folks need to really pay attention to here. And the ideas I stated yesterday may hold merit here, given that the NHC is coming on board with this idea now, and you can see that the track comes north of the mountains and moves through the Bahamas, and the waters in here are very warm, and the outflow pattern here is going to remain very conducive for strengthening here. You can see that the outflow is coming out very well defined in here, a little bit limited to the northwest here, kind of flattened out, but if we look at the water vapor imagery in here, that's because of this trough coming in over the eastern seaboard will limit the northwestern outflow for a little for a little while here, but once this trough lifts out, which we're going to talk about in a little bit here, this outflow will be able to expand more in the northwest direction, and the environment in here is going to be very conducive for, for strengthening for Irene during the next few days. Now we can see this trough reaching maximum amplification over the eastern seaboard here, and this is weakening the ridge over the Bahamas for the moment, which means that Irene is going to continue moving west-northwest and eventually try to curve northwest in the Bahamas here during the next couple of days. And if we look at the model forecast out of the GFS, just for illustration, this is 24 hours out, 500 millibars. We can see that the trough is over Massachusetts over here. And the nature of the pattern this year is that these troughs, they always try to dive in to the western Atlantic, and then this ridge in here near Bermuda remains very strong and taut and doesn't allow it to dig in. So instead of racing across like this and weakening the whole ridge north of Irene, it ends up lifting out very fast. So if we go out to day two, we can see that the trough has weakened and is moving off quickly to the northeast over here, leaving the ridge to build back in from the northeast of Irene, which is now down here in the southeast Bahamas, keeping her on a west-northwest to northwest track through the Bahamas and making a close pass to the eastern Florida coast here. And if we go out to day three, we can see that the ridge continues to build. And then notice what we're left with. We're left with the Texas ridge here, the Atlantic ridge to the east of the storm, and then the mean break between the the two is right over the eastern United States here, and Irene is sitting right here, so that means she's going to try to move up right into this weakness right between the two. This break was made for her coming right up to the north here. And then we go on, she continues to come northwest, and you can see the ridging starting to bridge over the top to the north of the storm. We go out to day five, she's coming in towards the coast, and then by day six she starts to move north northeast towards North Carolina in here. Now the issue with the models today 
is that I've been noticing that there's some disagreement. We have trough number one here, but then as this lifts out, we have to deal with a short wave that comes across, that moves out, and then we have another short wave that comes across by day six. And there's great disagreement among the global models as to the timing and strength of these short waves. In fact, the GFS and the European, just as, as an example, some of those runs have been deferring by more than a day on just the timing of those short waves coming across randomly in the jet stream. So this is the issue that we're dealing with in terms of the uncertainty as to when this recurves and exactly when it starts to make a northeast move because the European even tries to keep this offshore of North Carolina. It's a Cape Hatteras hit, but it's pretty far east, and the GFS is farther west here. We're still five days out from this, so there's some uncertainty. If we look at the tracks here in general, they are bundled into the Carolinas now. And just like I talked about yesterday, the Carolinas are now in the bullseye here. This does not mean that Florida is out of the woods here. And the NHC track on this map has not updated. The NHC track is now into South Carolina in here. This orange line is now into South Carolina. And as they mentioned, and I will mention as well, Florida is not completely out of the woods here. It looks a little better for them right now. And I do think this track goes into the Carolinas. However, this is a large storm. And you can see it here for yourself on satellite imagery. The cloud mass in here is very large. So imagine the center of this cloud mass just off the Florida coast by 100 miles. You're going to have the cloud shield over Florida. That means that tropical storm or hurricane conditions could occur on the peninsula even if the center of the eye moves offshore. So folks in this area here need to be prepared for this as well as of course the folks up here in the Carolinas. We're going to be talking about possibly a major hurricane in this area which, which means we could be talking about evacuations and all sorts of stuff like that and that's not meant to be frightening to anybody but it is the reality here that we could be dealing with a strengthening storm over the very warm waters of the Bahamas and the Gulf Stream as this tries to come ashore and the Hurricane Center is now on board with that idea. So folks need to have their hurricane plans ready to go here because we're only a few days away. It is five days, so there's a lot of time here, a lot of time to monitor the, monitor the system and make sure it's coming in, but all folks along this region should be ready. And again, we're talking about a track that's going to be recurving almost directly northward here in the direction. So that means that only a couple degrees of longitude difference could mean the difference between one state and another here. So folks along this entire region should pay attention regardless of the exact forecast track. My track still takes this into South Carolina here, but again, very minor shifts here could change it and it's five days out, which means a lot can change between now and then, so expect changes, expect shifts in the track, but this is going to be something for folks to keep a very close eye on as this big storm comes in and strengthens in this area. The region is conducive for strengthening. Again, we have warm water. Outflow is going to expand as that trough lifts out, and this, this region is going to be conducive for Irene to become one of the bigger storms that the eastern seaboard has seen for a while. And we may have to worry about it actually coming up into the northeast United States here, riding up the eastern seaboard and perhaps affecting New England, Long Island, D.C., all those major cities in there may have to deal with this as it dissipates coming off to the northeast, perhaps bringing hurricane force winds and flooding rains. And here, we may have to talk about that as well in the longer term. But of course, right now, the focus is landfall down in the southeast states, and everyone from Florida to North Carolina should be paying very close attention to this storm as Irene barrels her way west-northwest. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.